Hello everybody, it's Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini version 15. And today we're going to make a lens flare in Houdini. Um, now I ran across this uh, open source GL flares on Blendswap by CFERWIN3. It is CC0, and when I noticed this 26 megs, I thought, well, how heavy is this file? What's in there? So I went ahead and I brought down the uh, the blend file and I extracted the uh, images and this is what comes with the blend file all of these various lens flare elements so what I discovered is even though these are PNG files down here they do not have alpha so I went ahead and used After Effects and converted all these into lens flare elements with alpha so we could render them in Mantra so let's go ahead and do that just going to press tab, type geo. Now a lens flare to me is just a line with some uh, image map planes spaced along it. So I'm just going to start off with that in mind. Line, we'll type grid. Our grid will just be a two by two rows and columns. Anytime we're working with images, we're going to need a UV. So I type UV T to get UV texture. And because we're doing a copy, um, we'll probably want a little bit of randomization into our transform. So we end up with a line, some geometry, and then we drop down our copy. This will go to the left side, this will go to the right side. Now inside our copy here, we will activate the stamp tab and turn on stamp inputs and we'll type RND size for the variable name and then we'll type R-A-N-D parenthesis dollar sign P-T close parenthesis and this will run a random number generator based with the point number as the seed and populate this variable for every point in the line. If we go to transform we can install that random value with a stamp function so we say stamp parenthesis quote dot dot slash copy one quote comma quote R&D size is the name of our variable and then we'll give it a default value of one if the variable doesn't exist and just to see this in action I'm going to set our length to four and our points to four and we'll mouse wheel out uh, using spacebar mouse wheel and you can indeed see we have some random sized planes. Now in order to get an image on each one of these planes we need to use a style sheet to basically remap each one of these images based upon an attribute. So let's go ahead and split top bottom right click on scene view choose geometry spreadsheet and we'll drag this down and we'll populate this spreadsheet with a new attribute value which is the full file path to the image we want to display. I'm going to pop out to my code and uh, this is the code we're installing. I'll leave it up for a moment so that you can type it in or press pause on your video. Copy that and we need to paste this into an attribute wrangle. So we'll drop down an attribute wrangle here. We will edit the parameter interface and we'll throw a float over here and this will just be RNDC. This will give us at least basic control over modifying which image is going to show up on which plane. So let's paste the code in. I'm going to drag this over a little bit, make some room so we can see it all. It's not a lot of code. We start off by creating a blank attribute element name which has appeared down here. Then we create this full path to maps. Now this is where they're located on my disk drive system but more than likely when you pull the, these elements down you'll want to uh, set this string to where they're at on your system. And Then we have a list of names. If we look at the, I grabbed the list directly from here, you can see there's glows 0, glows 1, glows 2. 
So it's just all of the glow elements is all that we're going to demonstrate in this short example. We loop through the number of points in the line based upon this um, built-in attribute called numpt. Then we grab this random seed value up here and we add it to our index and we use that to create a random number that we multiply by the length of this list. So it basically gives us a way to randomly pick one of the items in the list. Once we have that, we create a full path and then assign it directly to the, the geometry spreadsheet uh, with the value intact. Now, style sheets want their attributes to be on the primitives um, column, basically. But our attribute is now on points. So we can use the copy attribute tab to migrate this element name to the primitive column. So we'll just say element name. And we can alternately, if we want, we could remove what's the, the value from the point by using the shift six caret there, element name. Click the way, so you notice it disappeared down here from points, and it has been migrated to primitives. And we have a random name for each one of our planes now. Let's go up one level, and we'll drop down a uh, shop net, and we'll get our materials set up. So we dive inside. Uh, we'll drop, pull out a mantra surface, close the tree. I'm going to call this M lens element. And all we really need to do on here is uh, activate emission and turn on use map. And if we hover over map, we'll see that the parameter we want to, to modify or populate is called emission texture. So let's go back up to geo and we'll call this uh, geo lens flare. We'll activate the material tab. We will browse to that shop net and grab that lens element. And then we're going to modify this parameter interface as well. Click the render properties tab and under filter type style sheet as one word. We'll open up the shaders folder and drag that onto materials. Hit accept and now we have a box where we can paste our style sheet code. And it's nothing too amazing here. It's just a few lines. I'm going to copy that, paste it in, and we'll talk about what it's doing here. I'm going to stretch that out a little bit so we can see all of the code. Now this is for Houdini 15 specific because the primitive group did not exist in 14 or before. So this is a new feature, but it allows us to basically grab a group. I'm grabbing star. I'm grabbing everything down here from the primitive column and we're going to override this material emission texture with a binding to that element name. So basically I'm saying emission texture equals lens flare element glow 7. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a try here. I'm going to add a camera to the scene, lock the view, and we'll just kind of look down the stack here. We'll activate the render tab, render view, select our camera, turn off preview, and click render. Now we do see that we're getting an image on our a plane here, but it definitely has an alpha issue. So let's um, select the lens flare and we're going to dive down into the material here and under opacity we'll set the scale to zero. And now we can see we have a lens flare for each one one in our stack and we can kind of look at this on the side view if we go like this. There we are. So now we've got a stack of these different images that we can look at or make face the camera if we choose to. And then if we go to say our attribute wrangle here we can change our random seed and we're going to get different num names populated from that list and thus we'll get different um, elements populated onto those planes. So that's the basics of it. Um, that's how you can uh, take files on the disk, route them to an attribute, and then use a style sheet to fetch that and route that information into Mantra so that you can use whatever texture maps you want, wherever you want,
based upon your attributes. And I went ahead, I'm going to open up this uh, more complete version of the lens flare where I created more complex code to um, basically handle, uh, to include all these different images that came with that blend file. For instance, like the caustics, the rings, the stars, the glows, secondary streaks. And you can see all I really did was add more lists. And then I added a little bit more sophistication to how I'm picking from those lists. And I went ahead and uh, built some more controls here in its own folder. And let's go ahead and see what we're getting. If I go to Objcam and render, you can see that I'm getting, we'll go ahead and close this guy out, close off panes so we can see this just a little bit bigger. I'm getting multiple elements in my lens flare and if I choose a different random seed it's going to create a new lens flare out of all those different images um, each time and I haven't even really played with the line I've got 15 length and 7 points so I'm probably not even looking at all of my 7 points because it's spread out if I drop this to 5 that's going to shrink the line way back and I'm going to be able to see many more of my layers there let's set that to 12 um, and you can do as many as you want like what if I do a 12 by 12 so now I've got a, a, at every unit I've got a new image that's being stacked up and if I go back to this you can see I've got some caustics some rings some stars and I can turn these off like say I did not want caustics what happens in this system is that the cost what was caustics gets replaced by another random number in this case it was rings and I could go to rings here and perhaps change its random number and then shuffle that around so that I get different rings in place of those caustics and then I could re-enable caustics that would come back and I could do the same thing with stars you can see if I change the random number on the star here I now get a, a six or seven pointed star um, that was glows and there's a different kind of star element so that's it this is a big white polygon which is in the form of an octagon I can turn that off if I don't want that much brightness and return to something like that so this is how you can uh, make a lens flare in Houdini and have some fun. And with that, I'm out.